Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, this is the Body of Christ Christian Ministries. I'm Bishop Elect D.C. Elliott, and we are one body in Christ. I'm excited to be here tonight to talk to you about a concept that's found in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. And uh, we'll get into the meat and potatoes. But I'm happy to discuss it with you today. Um, I am going to pray and then we are going to get into the word. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and praise you for who you are in our lives. I thank you and praise you for what you have done in our lives and what you continue to do in our lives. I thank you for continuing to fortify us and build us up continuing to share your word with us so that we might grow in our relationship with you binding us together as a family unto you uh committed to the purpose that you created us for and endeavoring to do that which will draw your family to you and give you glory for our lives we thank you and praise you in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen well good evening everybody if you're watching this live or if you're listening to this after the fact on YouTube, I just thank you for joining us and uh, continue to extend the opportunity to join us on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. or Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Um, you can find us on the web at www.tboccm.org. That's the body of Christ Christian Ministries org. And uh, it'll have a link on there. Uh, and if you click the link, you'll be able to join us whenever we're live. But we would look forward to having you with us. And uh, let's get into the word. I'm just excited tonight. So as we jump into the book of Ephesians, uh, we find Paul is a prisoner of Christ for the benefit of the Gentiles. Assuming, by the way, that you know that God gave him special responsibility extending his grace to the Gentiles. As uh, he briefly wrote earlier, God himself revealed this mystery, this mysterious plan unto him. Um, it says, as you read what he's written, you will understand that his insights into the plan uh, for regarding Christ. And God did not reveal it to previous generations but now by his spirit, he has revealed it unto his holy apostles and prophets. This indicates that everything that God wanted to do or wanted to be revealed or wanted to be known. He doesn't reveal it to everybody, but he reveals it to those in proper time um, for the generation that is supposed to impact in that particular area. So. I'll start out by saying that we're called to a particular time. We're called to a particular dispensation. We're, we're called to a particular challenge that the world is facing. And our witness is designed to uh, be the light in the darkness for those so that God might get the glory for our lives. And so Paul is kind of outlining that for us. It goes on to say, and this is God's plan, both Jews and Gentiles. It says both Jews and Gentiles who believe the good news uh, share equally in the riches inherit, uh, inherited by God's children. Huh. That means those who believe that they're called by God and have a divine path into him and those who believe that they're outsiders. Um, both are equally able if they believe in the sacrifice of Christ, which is the good news, and that God has created a pathway for salvation for us, that we might be saved and inherit the promises that we both equally share in the inheritance of God's children. Both are part of the same body. Both enjoy the promise of the blessings because they belong to Jesus Christ. Uh, and by God's grace and mighty power, uh, I've been given the privilege of serving him and spreading the good news. Now, this is Paul saying this, but this is the same for us. We have been given the privilege of serving him uh, in that same way. 
Um, Paul says about himself that he's the least of the deserving of all God's people. And he graciously gave him, God did, the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. Uh, he says he was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. Once again, not re re revealing everything from the beginning. But it, it simply says that God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. That's heavy. God's purpose, God's purpose in all of this was to use the church. Who's the church? We are the church. To display, to show what? His wisdom in its rich variety. So that means my experiences and what I've learned over time and the wisdom that I've gained might be different from somebody else who's also a believer. But between my, uh, the wisdom that God has revealed to me and the wisdom that God has revealed to you, if we are all showing the wisdom of God in all of his rich varieties, uh, then all the uh, unforeseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places, uh, to all the unforeseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places, uh, this was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, why is this significant? Because we've been reading in the book of Job, how God let us allowed us to be tested. And why did he allow us to be tested? Because he needed a witness to his word to be seen, travail through the challenges and tests that were provided so that others who did not believe or struggle with their faith could have hope that as we have overcome and been through our challenges that they too could go through and get through their challenges. And not only that, but the unseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places, meaning those, those spirits, those people who people or entities that rule the uh, realms of this world, they should also see God's glory. So, if you think about the devil tempting Job, the devil knew who Job was, knew what his testimony was, but still felt like he had he had to disprove who Job really was. So God allowed Job to be tested to prove who Job was and that his character was intact to the devil who was trying to disprove what God had said about Job from the beginning and what Job had been living out. I don't want to get too deep too early, but I, I do believe that uh, this is something that could be a blessing to you because if you understand that the enemy's plot is to dispel God's wisdom demonstrated through his people for all to see so that he could get the glory the enemy is trying to dispel that and say they 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 are not the people who you think they are they don't have the character that you say they have and so the way i'm going to prove this is i'm going to test them and put them through some challenges so that they'll speak against you this is the same thing he did uh to jesus christ jesus voluntarily walked this path to endure all the sins of the world that was heaped upon man by Satan who, who caused them um, through his trickery to get into a state of separation from God. Jesus walked the path to create um, connection back to God for the people that through trickery, the enemy disconnected. He's telling us in this passage of scripture uh, simply that even though we were separated, even though we were separated from 
the path of righteousness. We were separated from righteousness. We are, we are now called sinners. If we believe the good news of, of the sacrifice of Jesus, we now are equal partakers in the inheritance. And when we understand that God's purpose was to use us, the church, to display his wisdom based on what we learned and what we have faith in and what we're able to stand on and carry out through the trials and tests. That because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently in God's presence. We are now reconnected back to him. Amen. If I was reading in the King James Version and I, I, I stopped at Ephesians 3 and 7, it would say, Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. It, it's basically saying that huh, I was given... the title, the job and the responsibilities of a minister to minister, not by my might or my strength or my power, but by God's strength, might, and power that I could do his work. And this is the thing. It's according to the eternal purpose in which God created us for, that this is possible. So it goes on to say, so please don't lose heart because of my trials here. He's saying, as you look at me, be in prison and go through what I go through. Don't lose heart because I'm going through a challenge. Questioning why God, why? What did Paul do? Did he do something wrong? What, 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 what's happening? Why is he going through this? Is, is his witness not true is 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 he been deceiving us because it appears that he does not have your favor because he's going through something paul goes on to say i am suffering for you so that you should feel honored when i think about all of this i fall to my knees and i pray to the father the creator of everything in heaven and in, on earth i pray that from his glorious unlimited resources that he empower you with inner strength through this through his spirit paul is 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 encouraging us as we go along the way not to fall or not to be fall the idea that something is wrong with him or his witness because he's going through and that he's going through it for you why so that he could be a witness unto you so that you don't have to suffer God made a few of us to suffer so most of us don't have to and he only uses the people that he has confidence in that will demonstrate the witness that needs to be seen and no, and, and no matter how we do it it's still a blessing. Even if we struggle a little bit in the beginning to then gather ourselves together and stand in faith, that's still a testimony for somebody who is in that lowly place that they've fallen down and don't believe that they can get back up because they've seen you do it. Now they can do it. Paul continues along this line and he says, when Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. A lot of times when we're going through trials and tests, we don't believe we're loved. We, we believe we're abandoned. But as we choose to believe in God, despite our situation and circumstances, as we're able to trust in him, guess what? 
We're like a tree with roots that grow down into the ground, deep into the ground. And the nourishment is not regular water. It's the living water of the love of God that will keep us strong. The belief that he will not leave us or forsake us. In that faith, no matter how chaotic the situations or circumstances, we may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. That's what he's getting us to understand as we struggle. He goes on to say, may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand that you may be made complete in all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. And here comes the key voice. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. The recognition of his love, the faith in him, the ability to endure, the ability to trust in him and dig our roots down and start to absorb the living water, the love that he has for us that causes us to be able to stand in the midst of the struggles and the, and the challenges and not be tossed to and fro by every wind and wave of doctrine. It says, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us. So the mighty power that's being referred to is not the power that God retains himself, but it's the power that worketh that's already at work within us. That means you who are listening have the power of God on the inside of you to be healed, to be blessed, to be delivered, to stand in the midst of your challenge with your head up and get through it because that power that's working in you can accomplish infinitely more than you can ask. Or think. This is a hard concept for us to understand. First of all, because we think that the strength that we're asking for and the strength that we're calling upon is something that God has to give us and not something that God has already given us. The evidence that he's already given it to us is because he allows the test to come to challenge it. God is not setting you up for failure. And because he's not setting you up for failure, guess what? He's setting you up for victory. And because he's setting you up for victory, the only person that doesn't realize that he's done that is you. Unless you are resting in his full faith. And that's what it is that he wants us to rest in. He talked about the strength, the power that was already on the inside of us. Not power that we had to obtain or get, but power that he has already stored up for us. I pause and I think about this for a minute and I think about how many times I suffered through trials and tribulations and challenges and I allow my mind to go to a place of wonder if God was there with me when the word says that God is all around me. The word tells me he sent me a comforter but because I don't see it with my physical eyes, but I see my challenge with my physical eyes. I don't know how to combat the seen with the unseen. And so I struggle to bring to realization 
my faith, I'm trying to take it out of the spiritual realm and bring it into the realm of the natural so that I can physically see it so that I can rest my faith in what I can see. But that's not how God works. He'll let you see your affliction, but he'll challenge you to call on a power that you can't see to overcome what you can see. Because what's most real to God is what's in the spiritual and not in the natural. That's why he tells us to call those things not as though they were, to, to pray that the things that are established in heaven are, are healing um, are, 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 are gifting, uh, are blessings. He's asking us to call those things by faith out of heaven into earth. Because he's rested the power in us to do it. We just have to believe it. And that's our challenge. But what I want to leave you with today is the reason why you should believe. The reason why you should believe is because God is able through his mighty power at work in us. God is able to use the power within us to accomplish in infinitely more than what we can ask or think. There is a power that lies in us that God is waiting for us to tap into and call upon to do more than what we can ask or think. It's tied to his purpose. It's tied to bringing, his, his, uh, bringing him glory through our lives. It's not for misuse. It's for the use of the kingdom of God. To do miracles in our life. So that people might see it and understand who God truly is. He's waiting. He's waiting for us to believe in him. He's waiting for us to have the faith that he's called us to. And when we're ready to do that, he's ready to unleash the power that works on the inside of us to do more than what we can ask or think. I know this was a short message, but I pray that it was a blessing to you. Uh, I pray that you join us again on Tuesday night or Sunday night for these messages of encouragement that's designed to draw us into God and have a strong relationship with him. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, I pray that you like and subscribe to the channel so that you're alerted anytime we post new messages or go live, that your life might be enriched for it. If you'd like to support the ministry, you can do so by doing it via Cash App at dollar sign T B O C C M. That's dollar sign T B O C C M. All of your donations go to help us continue to do the work that we're called to do and to impact our community and our world in a positive way. I thank you for joining us today. I pray that God is a blessing to you. Until next time, God bless.